be the facilitator of this okay. uh, course, short course? Sure, briefly. Um, okay, so like you said, we work closely with Dr. Meridia. Uh -huh. um, this, um, I work with the NEPAT agency. Mm -hmm. It's an African Union agency, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the uh, policy implementing agency of the African Union. And uh, uh, as, as part of, of, of our work, we, we are closely collaborating with the Michigan State University, particularly Professor Mer Meridia and, and his team, uh, to build biosafety capacity in Africa. Uh, uh, we, we notice in Africa that uh, even though there is this incredible technology out there that can help African farmers, uh, the capacity to handle this uh, technology as in the regulatory capacity is not moving at the same pace as the technology is being developed and that, that is a gap. And so our duty is to fill in that gap and, and try to uh, help to build regulatory capacity for the um, African Union member states, mm -hmm. particularly um, member states that are willing to, to accept this, this technology. So as part of that capacity building process, uh, there is a component in there in that uh, there is wanting for the technology to be safe. Mm -hmm. And then there is also uh, a consideration that, that uh, you need to produce safe crops for the environment. Mm -hmm. But again, those crops must be safe for human and animal consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, and th that is where I come in because my background is in uh, food science and nutrition and also in biosafety. So what we are trying to do is um, to work with a number of African regulators who have backgrounds in uh, f uh, f food safety assessment uh, to be able to to do a review, uh, technical review of, of dossiers for uh, genetically modified food, particularly the food safety component of, of this. And, that. and so, uh, we got in touch with our collaborators here. Uh, I work with Professor Holland, Holland Wood, um, who is uh, retired, I, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Um, he is my faculty collaborator here in, okay. in, in MSU. And so we got together, assembled a team of experts from ac across the world who are quite knowledgeable in the food safety components of, of this whole um, like knowledgeable in reviewing food safety components of, of, of biotech crops mm -hmm. uh, to come up with a, a training course for African regulators. Uh, so we brought regulators from uh, six African countries mm -hmm. here and to, for them to be able to interact with these external experts mm -hmm. and, and also share knowledge. Uh, so we would be able to uh, enhance their capacity to to handle food safety data when, when they have such an application. Um, and this is important because a number of the African countries are, uh, are, are doing what we call confined field trials mm -hmm. of biotech crops. Uh, some of these confined trials are quite advanced. Mm -hmm. So the next logical stage is for them to commercialize. Mm -hmm. Now, as part of the commercialization process, you need to uh, prove that that particular crop is safe for human consumption mm -hmm. and you need the capacity to be able to do that kind of review mm -hmm. uh, and this is where these participants come in so we are preparing them for commercial re release uh, mm -hmm. in their various countries mm -hmm. basically so there are no commercially approved GM crops in Africa right now is that hmm. correct? yeah uh, there are uh -huh. um, we have Burkina Faso that has already commercialized. Okay. Um, so l let me explain. It gets a bit, uh, a bit from country to country. Uh, yeah, it yes. gets a bit technical. So let me let me just explain. There is that of uh, approval on paper saying that this particular trait has been approved for commercial release. Mm -hmm. But then that trait has to go through what we call the varietal release process mm -hmm. for the farmer to have access to the seed. Mm -hmm. So. For uh, countries that have gone through this process where they've gone through the varietal release process and, and have released the seeds to the farmers, mm -hmm. uh, we have South Africa, we have uh, Burkina Faso, and then we have Sudan. Okay. So, so 
we have three countries that, uh-huh. that have commercialized that. Okay. Now for countries that have said, okay, this event is approved for release in our country. Uh, we have Kenya, we have Nigeria, and we have Malawi uh, that have also done that. But the difference here is that they've not reached that stage where the farmer actually had access to the seed because they are now going through the seed registration process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we have approvals also in Nigeria and um, Malawi and also uh, Kenya. Kenya. in Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. Okay. The challenges uh, with regard to the the legal environment uh, mm-hmm. in that we need some legal instruments to be able to um, implement the law. Uh, mm-hmm. We have the law. We, what we need is an implementing regulation to be able to fully implement the law. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that once that is done, uh, we have a number of confined trials that are quite advanced in, 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 uh, in Ghana, like mm-hmm. for cotton and for cowpea and all that. Mm-hmm. And so um, once the legal instrument is in place, then there's a likelihood that we would have Ghana as well join in there as a fourth country that would be able right. to commercialize this technology. So it's, it's quite exciting. Uh, for, Good for, for you. Yeah. 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 Do you come from an agriculture um, background, family? Background. <laughs> no. No? Uh, it's not commercial agriculture. It's uh-huh. uh, subsistent mm. kind of farming. Yeah. So yeah. my, my mommy was a farmer. Uh-huh. Uh, so I grew up on the farms, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, you have to go to the farm, come back before you go to school, and it's okay. it. It was so in in that way. Uh, I grew up. I have an agricultural uh-huh. kind of parent background, parenting uh-huh. background, but it's not commercial. It's, it's just not commercial. Just pick up a few and uh, feed your kids and the kind uh-huh. of that to sustain the family. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you think would be important to talk about in terms of MSU's partnership with Africa and trying to help um, really um, uh, lead the way in terms of the policy making and guidelines? There? Mm. I, mean, I, I think um, the partnership so far we've had with MSU has been incredible mm-hmm. um, uh, in that. Here to before this, it's 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 challenging uh, to, to to be able to open up the the, the continent to, um, and I'm speaking here in specific reference to this particular technology, which is biotechnology. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are countries out there that are far advanced, uh, and their expertise are out there, mm-hmm. and you 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 just need a conduit to be able to connect to these expertise. Mm-hmm. And MSU has been very instrumental in this. Uh, and the way this has shaped policy is that we've had a number of uh, occasions where we we took a number of policy makers out on steady tour mm-hmm. um, to go and visit other countries. We even brought some of them here mm-hmm. to, uh, to, to the U.S. through the collaboration with MSU for them to come and see. Because before then, Policy makers actually pictured GMOs as monstrous crops that can eat, eat, eat you up mm-hmm. if you even approach them. And the perception was really bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, through these kind of collaborations mm-hmm. where we brought people uh, to America, to Brazil, sent some to India, this kind of partnership uh, was really instrumental in, in, um, in sh- shaping their perception Mm-hmm. So now they, they see the crops on the field and they are like, okay, yeah, this, is, this looks, looks pretty normal to me. This is just like an, an ordinary cro- mm-hmm. crop. It's not those pictures I see in, uh, on various websites where you have monstrous crops that mm-hmm. are trained. So uh, we, we've had people, policymakers, that have softened their stance mm-hmm. uh, because hitherto you see them taking very hardline stance on, mm-hmm. on GMOs and this affects policy, uh, the policy direction they go. <clears throat> Sorry, and that they don't want to see the crop in their in their countries. But these kind of partnerships have, have shaped the, uh, the policy environment such that now they are softening their stance. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the Ghana is an example, Ethiopia is an example. Uh, mm-hmm. So before then, you you don't want to talk about GMOs in Ethiopia, but now we have combined trials in Ethiopia, exactly. and very soon you would see you find uh, 
small scale farmers yeah. benefiting from this technology in Ethiopia. And this yeah. kind of uh, collaborations we are getting uh, between MSU and, mm -hmm. and NEPAD, and it's, it's been an incredible partnership so far. And so okay. you realize, you, you, you may not realize what is being done from here, yeah. but when you come to the African continent, to some of the countries we are trying to serve right now, mm -hmm. uh, if we are successful, then we are making this technology available to uh, poor farmers. Uh, then this would would change their their livelihoods, and mm -hmm. and and so you 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 are affecting livelihoods of people outside the U.S. that you don't you are not even aware of, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's an incredible experience. Yeah. And not not only the economic benefits, but just the, from the standpoint of nutrition exactly. and feeding exactly. people. Yeah. So the entire continuum, uh, economics, yes, that's, that's good. But um, you take a, a, a poor farmer in Burkina Faso, for instance, we interacted with one of them. And um, uh, for, for him, it's not just the money he's getting from the farm, but this technology changed his life such that he now has time for even his family. Mm -hmm. He has time to spend yeah, because he he doesn't spend all his time going around spraying or managing the farm uh, he sprays only twice and he comes back he has ample time to invest in other uh, social uh, um, call it, commitments mm -hmm. and this improves his livelihood mm -hmm. not because he's getting enough money from these farms mm -hmm. but because he also now has enough time and it's improved his health because he's not having to spray a lot of hazardous chemicals. So there are little, little um, benefits that these farmers are getting um, that if we're able to help other countries to assess this technology. Uh, like Karim said, we are, not coming to, we are not telling you to adopt the technology or not. Yeah. Uh, our duty is to build your capacity to be able to effectively regulate the technology. So crucial. if it, the choice of whether to use the technology or not is purely that of the member states. Mm -hmm. But should you decide to utilize this technology, we are here to help you to build the regulatory capacity. And the, this partnership mm -hmm. between us and MSU has been really, really help, helpful. Okay. Mm. Great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to keep you too long. No, that's fine. a whole group of no. people waiting yeah, for you. But, sure. um, yeah, I know. This is... This is wonderful. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I'll make sure um, that you get a copy, too, of whatever we end up creating. Sure. Whether it's obviously going to be some video, but in terms of print pieces or anything like that. Sure. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you. Thank you. Hopefully it wasn't too Okay. <laughs>